by the Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. S Madam. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm very proud and fortunate to stand here at third reading to support our government in moving forward this important piece of legislation, Bill C-4, which repeals Bills C-377 and C-525. I spoke on this bill earlier, but I wanted to share my thoughts on Bill C-4 again because I believe strongly in working to create a prosperous Canada, one in which the middle class and those looking to join it can grow and succeed. It was something that I campaigned on last year and a key plank in our government's election platform. The two bills that C4 seeks to repeal undermine labor unions and labor relations in our country and in so doing weakened our middle class. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, our government has an unwavering commitment to the middle class through initiatives like the Canada Child Benefit, which now sees nine out of 10 Canadian families receiving higher monthly and tax free benefits of approximately $2,300 a year, our middle class tax cut which reduced taxes for over 9 million Canadians, and Madam Speaker, that will provide over the next five years approximately $20 billion of tax relief to Canadians. Yes, Madam Speaker, $20 billion of tax relief to middle class Canadians, and recently an historic agreement that the Minister of Finance reached collaboratively with his provincial colleagues to expand and strengthen the Canada Pension Plan. Madam Speaker, our government is working to strengthen Canada's economy and ensure that all Canadians have the opportunity to succeed. When I last spoke on C4, I talked about the importance of the bill in restoring a clear and balanced approach to labour relations in Canada. I also talked about the fact that both my parents were union members, and it was through the labour movement and through its fight for fair wages and, ba and benefits that our family prospered in, in Canada. Frankly, it is one of the reasons why I have the privilege to stand and speak in this House today. I would like to focus my comments today more on my personal connection to labour unions and their importance in helping create and sustain a strong middle class. But before I do, I should probably provide some context and briefly explain the two bills that are to be repealed. Bill 377, which received royal assent in June 2015 and came into force at the end of 2015, created unnecessary red tape for the unions and put workers at a disadvantage during the collective bargaining process. C-525, which came into force on June 16, 2016, made it more difficult for employees to unionize and easier for a bargaining agent to be decertified. Both bills diminish and weaken Canada's labour movement. They're counterproductive to a positive working relationship between employees and employers and negatively impacted the growth and prosperity of Canada's middle class. The two bills that C4 seeks to repeal were ideologically driven, not fact, and aimed at under undermining the effectiveness of labour unions across Canada, from coast to coast to coast. One bill, three, bill C377, placed onerous and unfair reporting obligations that were solely, solely directed at labour and not any other organisations, be it professional or otherwise. And the other, bill, five, bill C525, changed the way that unions were certified and decertified, making it harder for workers to organize. There was no compelling need to make it harder on the labor movement, no sound economic argument, argument for the conservative changes to the labor code. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Given the essential role that unions play in fostering and maintaining a prosperous middle class, protecting the rights of workers, needlessly upsetting the labor market relations system that has contributed significantly to the overall Canadian economy makes little economic sense. Madam Speaker, I said that I would be focusing my comments on a personal connection to the labour movement. Those of you who know me know that I'm an economist and a former corporate and government debt analyst who worked on Wall Street and Bay Street for nearly 25 years. You might be asking yourself, why would I be such a strong proponent of what, Be of what Beal C4 is? Well, Madam Speaker, because professionally, and personally, I recognize the importance and balance in Canada's labour system, not only in allowing workers to make free and informed decisions, but also for employers to have a degree of certainty and access to a skilled workforce. If we want to see an example of the labour system, work, system working in balance, we can look no further than the recent negotiations between General Motors and Unifor, in which through a transparent collective bargaining process, both sides have come to a tentative agreement 
which seeks to achieve the best interests of both parties, business and labor. If I may quote Jerry Diaz, Unifor's national president, this framework puts into motion what will be an historic agreement to secure a future for our members, for our communities, and for the auto industry in Canada, said Unifor National President Jerry Diaz, who led the negotiations. Madam Speaker, we must always ensure that labor and business can bargain in an open and balanced process, and the bills that are repealed in C4 tilted that balance, and it was wrong. In my constituency of Bond Woodbridge, I see how a fair and balanced labor system allows Layuna and the Carpenters Union to work with their partners, helping to ensure the availability of an educated and skilled labor force. That collabor collaboration has played a large role in the phenomenal growth in enterprises in the city I call home, Vaughan, throughout the GTA, and frankly, all of Canada. Madam Speaker, over the summer, I attended a Leona Industry Awareness event at their training facility in my riding of Vaughan Woodbridge, where I saw firsthand the training programs that Leona offers its members. Leona and its partners continue to train successive generations of workers who make Ontario a strong province and a beautiful place to call home. We must remember that, that unions like Layuna continue to advocate for better health and safety conditions, strengthen pensions, which, Madam Speaker, allows for a strong and prosperous and growing middle class. Madam Speaker, on a personal level, I also appreciate the importance of unions and a fair and balanced labour relations system. Being raised on the northwest coast of Canada in Prince Rupert, British Columbia, one of three boys, both my parents were union members. My father was a tradesperson, a carpenter and sheet metal worker. My mother, who, like my father, immigrated from Italy, worked in the fish processing plant. My parents came to Canada to build a better life, and they brought with them the only asset they had, a work ethic and a desire to build a better life for their family. With their union job, with benefits, good wages, and a safe environment, their aspirations for their family came true. My parents instilled in me a very strong work ethic, and certainly those who know me know that I've carried that ethic with me proudly my entire life. They also instilled me a very real understanding of the importance of unions and what decent wages and benefits mean to families. In high school and while studying at university, I was a union member working at the fish cannery, the Prince Rupert Grain Elevator, and a pulp mill during the summers to help pay for my education. The work wasn't easy and the pay wasn't exorbitant, but it was a fair and decent wage. And because of rules and oversight that unions helped to bring about, dangerous works environments were made safer. Madam Speaker, unions and their members are the backbones, are one of the backbones of the middle class in Canada. Union jobs enabled my immigrant parents to join the middle class. They allowed me the opportunities to pursue a higher education. And ultimately, and with much happiness and privilege, it led me here to stand before you in the House of Commons. Madam Speaker, in closing, I want to reiterate, reiterate my support for Bill C-4, my full support, and our government's efforts to restore a fair and balanced labour relations system, and reaffirm my recommitment, my commitment to working toward creating and maintaining a prosperous Canada, one in which the middle class and those looking to join it can grow and succeed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. When I asked uh, whether the government would support uh, anti-scab legislation, uh, the answer was that the government supported a tripartite process, which sounds sensible unless what it means is that employers would have a veto on anti-scab legislation. The other response we've heard in previous debates is that the government would only consider anti-scab legislation as part of a comprehensive review of the Canada Labour Code. So I was wondering if the member for Vaughan Woodbridge could tell us when his government is going to begin that comprehensive review of the Canada Labour Code. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Uh, thank you to my, my colleague for that question. Uh, Bill C-4 seeks to address uh, two real issues that were brought in by the prior government, previous government on Bill C-377 and C-525, which tilted the balance uh, away from unions, or really tilted the balance that was in place. And that's the first step we've, we've adopted to address uh, within our labour relations uh, area. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Barry Innisville. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And um, one of the things that's interesting, and I know that the Honourable Member and I are both from the same province, is that I was wondering if he's aware that the construction industry is the only industry 
uh, where certification is done by secret ballot, and yet every other uh, organization, or so actually they're not done by secret ballot, uh, but every other uh, uh, union certification that happens in the province of Ontario uh, is done by secret ballot. So uh, being from Ontario, I'd like to ask the honourable member, Madam Speaker, is why should it be any different federally, uh, and does he actually support uh, the current practice in the province of Ontario for uh, most unions, with the exception of the construction industry, to require a secret ballot for union certification. Does he support that? Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Uh, th uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you for the question, uh, your colleague from Barry Innes Innesville, I believe. Uh, what I will say is, is one of the, one of the uh, components uh, which we see in C4 and repealing 377 and 525 is that firstly, union financial disclosure is already addressed in Canada's Labour Code and many provincial labour labor statutes. So many of the provisions contained in 525 and 377 were actually unnecessary. Secondly, that the bill targeted only unions and not professional organisations. With regards to the construction industry, there is a very healthy collective bargaining, bargaining process that takes place in Ontario between the construction unions and, and their counterparties and has allowed the province to grow and prosper. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? Honourable Député de Shefford. Honourable Member for Shefford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to congratulate my colleague for his excellent speech and for his support for this bill. I agree with him. Unions are important partners in our labour relations, and uh, those relations need to be based on collaboration, transparency, and respect. C4, indeed, will re-establish balance and fairness to improve our labour relations with our unions in Canada. My question is very simple. I would like to offer my colleague the opportunity to give me a few examples, a few additional examples of the advantages of this bill. Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to my, my colleague and friend across the aisle. Uh, what I will say on, on Bill C-4, it restores balance within the labour labor relations system here in Canada. And we need balance in any type of bargaining process. Uh, you need that system in place. And more importantly, for the broader economy, you need to have transparent collective bargaining process take place, much like we saw with the, uni the recent Unifor negotiations, much like we saw with the recent Cup W uh, Canada Post negotiations. And frankly, the bill that the prior government uh, brought into, the two bills that the prior government, uh, previous, previous government brought into place were unnecessary, basically attacked unions. Uh, and tilted the system in a way where it upset the balance that was currently in place and was working fine. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate. 